So you want the AI to dock itself out one of these connectors. In this tutorial, I'm going to be quick, straightforward and show you how to do this in a convenient time frame without any blabbing. Now, this is where the guide starts. So to start with, you're going to probably want your drone in the background. The drone needs gyroscopes and ideally it needs thrust in all directions. If it can do this, the AI can handle and manage the grid a lot better. So we've got a basic grid here in the background. Now we're going to talk about our AI blocks that we need for this. We need AI flight and AI recorder. Now to get these onto the grid, they are directional. So as I place this here in front of us, you'll notice that there's a rear panel, there's a left panel and a front panel. So we want that front or F towards the front of the grid so the, the AI knows which way to go. We also need our AI recorder. Now that both AI are placed, we're going to jump in the control panel and we'll start programming. So our AI flight block here is very simple and straightforward. We have on and off for the behavior. We have collision avoidance. So we're going to turn this off. And the reason we want to turn this off is if we have it on, it won't allow us to get close enough to the connector to connect. We also need to enable precision mode. Precision mode will allow us to get as close as possible to the GPSs that we play shortly. Now we also have a speed limit. You can change this, but I found a slower drone is a more efficient drone and tends to get there without crashing. Minimum altitude the same, you can adjust that so it doesn't crash or drag along the floor. That's if it's using AI navigation. In this case, it's not. It's using the AI flight recorder. It's gonna be doing exactly what you tell it to do. So further down, we have aligned to gravity of the planet. Since we're on a planet, we have that enabled. And then we have maximum pitch and roll angles. This is important if you have a grid like this one, for instance, in the background. This grid couldn't survive going upside down. So in the option of this, we have set it to 10 degrees. So the AI will never take it past the 10 degree sort of roll and pitch angles. That'll be super important. Now that being said, we're on to the AI recorder. Now with the AI recorder, to make this super easy, we can go to the info tab, we can tick show AI functions, go back over to the control panel, and then we'll start ticking these options. So first of all, we wanna show it on the hood. We also want to show the path on the hood and show selected points on the hood. So doing all this will allow us now to see the points that we plot and also where the block is. So you see the little AI recorder block going red at the front of the ship. Now that's where each GPS point will be taken from. So that's something to consider. So let's begin. So going to our G menu now, we can add the AI recorder. Adding the AI recorder and adding the add waypoint option to the, op the bottom will be every time we press one on the keyboard, it will now set us a waypoint at that location. So let's give it a go. So we're gonna put one waypoint there. You can see waypoint zero has been set. We're gonna set a second waypoint over here. And then we're gonna set one waypoint right above it. So this ship's not got much thrust, so we need to align it the best we can. So there's the other one. So there's a chain of waypoints being created. And then we're going to shuffle down and we're going to wiggle it over so we're actually in the connection point. Now the best way to actually connect these up, I found, is press C. So it'll drop the thrust and then press 1 like so. And now we have our path. So with that taken into consideration, we need to disable our connector so we can actually fly away. And we'll fly back out here and we're going to just test to see if this path is working. So we'll fly back to waypoint 0. We're going to go to our AI flight. We're going to enable the AI behavior, AI recorder. We're going to enable the hate behavior, and then we're going to press play. And it will now work its way through these particular waypoints. So here we go. It is navigating through the waypoints nicely. Let's jump over to another camera perspective. Yeah, there it is. And we should get a connection. There we go. Perfect. That's exactly what we wanted to achieve. So you know how to do that now. Let's take it to the next level. So now I want to talk about this, getting it to lock to the connector below. So as you can see, we've had a perfect lock there and it's lowered itself in. So if we go K on the menu and we scroll our way up to the top, we'll see the AI recorder. And the AI recorder, you can actually set up actions on each of the waypoints. So for this one, we've actually got on waypoint three, a little docking procedure. And I've set this up on a timer block. Now you could, set this up to connect straight away via the connectors the reason i haven't done this is because by having it on a timer block it gives it an extra second to connect and that's what allows it to connect more successfully we've found out we're doing a bit of testing now in this next part of the tutorial i'm going to show you how we can get the drone to dock 
with a moving grid. So in this case, we've got a truck and this truck is always going to be in different locations wherever we put it. So we're going to use a reference beacon. You can see that beacon there located on the top of the cab. It doesn't need to be anything special. It's just a bog standard beacon. Once we've done that, we can configure inside here. If you remember the little re AI recorder block. So AI recorder block is here. And if we scroll all the way down to the bottom, you'll see a reference beacon. And that's what we've got this set to. So with that reference beacon set on that small grid, if we press play, it will now attempt to move to a docking location. When I saw this in the Keen trailer, I was a bit shocked, a bit confused on how they'd got this to work. But basically, instead of making the waypoints out in the world, it makes them around this particular object. So it'll always move to the two waypoints that I've set. So I've set one at the rear there, then I put one up above and then one close to the rover. So I'll let this speed up and I'll show you it come into docking. So there we have it. Now with a timer block and a locking function, we could have this locked to the deck, turn off the thrusters, and then we could travel on via the truck. So just another cool little concept. Now sadly, we've arrived at the end of this tutorial. But I'm going to do a quick recap and give you a few further tips that have really helped me get to grips with these new AI systems. Now first off is how to plan out your AI and the best and most simple way I figured out doing this is grab yourself a sheet of paper get yourself on paint and plan it out a bit like a wiring diagram so each waypoint each stage that you want the AI to do something different draw it out write it down because if you're a visual learner like me the things just get garbled up in your head and you start to forget what things are doing at different waypoints so planning it down on a sheet of paper or in paint allows you to know what's going to be happening and you can also rub things out and make changes at different stages throughout the AI's travel now, that being said, these AI blocks have really got me excited. I think they're a really fun concept, and they take the idea of what you could do with the programming block, but take out the challenge of learning a whole coding language. With these two simple blocks, we can combine these with timers, event handlers, and also the rest of the blocks in the AI arsenal, and we can end up with some really fun combinations. There's a few ideas that I've got in the pipeline. I think I'm going to try to work on like an SOS drone that will come out rescue you if you get shot down i'm also having a look at building a mining drone that can come to you at a requested position and then mine the resource and then return to base by itself and i've got a few more automated missile attack drones drone swarms there's so many drone ideas that you can do it's going to be absolutely crazy let us know in the comment section below what you're planning on doing with the drones and also give us some tips and tricks that could help us build drones a little bit more effectively now to wrap this up that's the final point i want to talk about building these drones takes a hell of a lot of time if you want to build a drone swarm you're talking perhaps maybe if you're super fast five minutes per drone so that's 20 drones the, the, this aspect of time and investment into wiring each one of these drones up um, actually gets quite a bit of a headache after a while when you've got a landing pad for four drones and you're wiring each one up with 10 minutes you can't just copy and paste them or they'll all crash into each other while they're trying to dock into the same location so there's a lot of factors we've got to consider here and on top of that they're named ai blocks but i'll leave it to you to decide are these really ai they're just copying the movement pattern that you're inputting to them i understand the combat and the defense and the other ones are definitely more ai focused but these two um they seem a bit too basic to be AI, but still a bit more advanced uh, than doing it yourself. Anyway, I'd like to thank you guys for watching, and I will see you next time.